This is a Kodak Ektapro high spec processor. What the heck is that? This is the top of the line model for the Ektapro EM high speed cameras. Um, so if this is the low end here, this is the high end. Uh, I I paid about 100 bucks for this plus shipping. Maybe all in it was about 200 bucks, which is a lot of money for something which doesn't work. But honestly, this here was, I could basically consider this free. I wasn't after this. I was after this cable that came with it. This is 75 feet of cable. Good luck finding either of these connectors for 20 bucks. And then have fun with this 70 conductor cable that's probably all shielded in coax, like just forget it. So I'd rather spend a whack of cash to buy that cable pre-assembled. And this comes in for free. Well, okay, reality, I got a discount on this here. It was like 100 bucks total plus shipping, which I think was probably like 60 bucks or something like that. Um, anyways, the reason I got it for cheaper and because it doesn't work is because the seller went to go test it after I requested this particular one. It had an AC connector here that was square. And he said he turned it on and the light briefly turned on, then went out. And so as a result, he can't guarantee that it works, so he was just going to throw it away. And I was like, no, 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 I don't care. Like, I can use the boards in this to possibly upgrade this. Um, or there's a possibility I could actually be able to fix it. But sure, like, if you give me a discount on this, like, I'll buy it still. And he's like, all right, sure, but I'll double check it again. And so I received it like this. No complaints. I am missing the screws off the front of this here. But, uh, again, no complaints. So I can see he has been in here. Uh, we've lost a fuse holder. We've lost a little bit of wiring. And I'm assuming that's the AC in there right now. Uh, so I'm gonna attach AC power to this and uh, we'll see what it does. Okay, so now that I have it on its side, I can just twist it open a bit more here. So our two fuse holders here would have connected to there. And then we have on that side of the switch it would have gone to the plug. So that I'm aware of, there's an IEC connector you can get for this. Or you can get a square latching AC connector for this, that's four pins, or a DC circular connection, which I think works between 24 and 48 volts and has a whole different power supply in here. Um, because this is square, I'm pretty sure that this is not a DC power supply. And it also says right here as well, um, that this is AC. So um, I'm fairly confident if I hook up AC up to this, I mean, he's already done it. It hasn't blown up. It doesn't, it doesn't smell like it's blown up. So I think we're on track to something here. Safety officials hate him. This one simple trick gets you electrocuted as easy as one, two, three. Now I, I have trust in my um, cheater cable here, but anyway, so that's set up. Let's turn it on. I should be using the foot pedal with this. Hey, that actually sounds like it's working. Is the light on? No, the LED is not on. Uh, okay. Okay, so the fans in this thing here are DC. So that means AC's getting in and it's actually bringing up the power supply. Let's, let, let's, let's attach a monitor to this. Okay, just added a video connection there. It's composite, and look at that. I got a test pattern. I actually got text here too. Power off processor before connecting imager. This is actually working. Okay, cool. So, huh. But there's no LED. Maybe the LED is actually bad. Let me attach an imager and see what happens. Okay, yeah. So, there is something going on. I'm getting this weird um, chain linking going on on the screen here. Uh, the remote, the, connect, the keypad's connected, and it's stuck in system initialization in progress. So that means this is powering up. I don't think it's communicating with the imager. And Tesla 500 did the same thing as I'm doing here now, so that should be fine. Unless it really is. No, I don't think it's the cable. But also, the imager's plugged in. I don't have anything on the CRT. So we're missing something here. I don't have power to this. This is not responding. I have no LED there. It definitely feels like we're missing volts here somewhere. I should turn this off before things start to go explodey on me. All right, uh, let's see if we can figure out where that LED goes. Okay, I just have some test leads touching on to the LED there. No volts. So whatever powers, turn that off. Whatever powers that LED, 
uh, is not relevant to powering up, I guess, part of the imaging system, but there's no power going to the imager. Uh, it won't, whatever controls the keypad in here is not working. Um, and, okay, this is a challenge. I gotta figure out what, what's powering that LED there and just work backwards from there. Okay, yeah, this is becoming a little bit of a nightmare to get open. Like, there's boards everywhere, there's screws everywhere now. So now I know that, yes, we're just using a modular power supply here. Uh, oh, God, like the whole back had to come off of this thing? Not fun. But now I can figure out what's going on. So the LED doesn't go directly to the power supply here. Uh, I did check it. It is actually a good LED. Uh, it's the yellow and black wire there, not to be confused with the yellow and black there. And it runs along the harness, goes past here. One of the yellow and black hides back here, but the one we're after is here. And it goes into this connector here. This resistor here then goes across to positive 12 volts. And one thing I'm noticing here, there is an awful lot of tantalum on this as well. So, okay. That, that, that may explain why it briefly turned on and went out. Uh, it could be that there's something on the 12 volt rail that's shorted. I know it's not as simple as this board here has a short on 12 volt, so I have the multimeter attached and, uh, we're about one mega ohm and going down, that could very well just be a capacitor, but that's still, we're actually dropping a fair bit here. That's still pretty high, that's fine. So it's not this board. Okay, so I figured out that the red wire goes in here and it goes into the back plane. And there's another red wire right here, which then snakes back up. And that's what goes to the power supply. There's our red wire right here. So here's ground, one rail, ground, one rail. There's our 12. Uh, oh wait, sorry, no, yeah. Ground, one rail, ground, one rail. One rail here, ground. Uh, one rail, ground, ground, and this is probably going to be 5 volts. All of the grounds are currently tied together. So, the color coding's good. Um, and I've beeped this out. So yes, there is a path from here up to there. Now I need to see if I can separate the power supply from that connector. Uh, and that's proving to be a challenge. Um, the screw terminal here, I can't reach it with a screwdriver. This one here, Kind of the same ordeal. Um, if I can get a screwdriver, yes, okay, there's holes right here, so I'm betting you if I pull this out of the way again, I can actually get a screwdriver up and get that out. All right, so I was able to get that terminal loose. There's the 12 volt line disconnected. So it's just the multimeter now attached, and check this out. I turn it on. 12 volts. So that then means either with no load, the power supply is not failing, or more than likely, uh, our failure is going to be on the harness. Actually, what is our resistance? It's infinite. Okay, it's actually more like a thousand. But that's significantly better. Okay, so that's definitely going to be it, probably. Yeah, if I just go with that there to ground three ohms so all right let's go from there i'm putting this panel back on because for now i don't really need to have it off but check out this evil thing these nasty petrified rubber feet i don't see a screw thread in there or a screw head in there and yet yep they are screws oh you dirty 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 person Damn you, Kodak. So the plan here is I'm going to keep the multimeter on like it's... Okay, the wire is a little bit loose here, but you get the idea. Like, it's it's still high enough that it beeps. That still doesn't see... Yeah, it went back to 1 ohm there, so that's no good. So the plan here is to simply start taking wires out and start pulling boards. And hopefully the short's on one of the boards, and eventually I'll just pull out a board and this will go up and stop having a direct short, and at which point there, chances are I found where my fault is. Okay, check it out. So I started pulling cabling, and I mean, our resistance got went up a little bit here, but that's just because I was bumping this again. Um, but I was going down through the boards, and then I got to this one here, 
EMDTC Plus, and I found that when I pulled it out, boom, the short's gone away. So our fault is on this board somewhere. Yeah, with that board removed, uh, we're at 500 ohms. That sounds a lot more reasonable. Check out that one little tiny ball of solder there on C4. Well, this board's already nothing but bad luck, is it? It's been a while since I've had the camera set up like this, and I'm not sure why I'm not just using the overhead camera on the table here. Anyways, so I suspect one of these tamps here is shorted. So we have a ground point right here for testing. So let's just start poking at these to see which ones are our circuit and just beep from there. Okay, so that's our negative sign. Of course, the one with the solder blob also is a suspect. Okay, and are any of these 12s? Could very well be one of those two. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to clip out those two tents and see what happens to short clears. Let's try with that one first, because it's the one with the solder blob. What would be the odds of that? Really? Ladies and gentlemen, that was it. I wasn't even trying. That was the tant. Okay, I'm not sure if that's going to focus. That's just 2216. So I'm pretty sure that's 22 microfarad, 16 volts, polarized tantalum. And this says... Says it's a 0.2 ohm resistor. Junk. Okay, so I've clipped it out of there. Um, I'm not sure that's the wisest decision to do, but I don't have any replacements right now. But I've just marked on there, 16 volts, 22 microfarads. And um, we're going to put this back in, I'll redo the wiring, and then we'll um, quite literally do a smoke test. Because if there's anything else in the 12 volt that shorts, we'll find it. Or maybe the power supply will just shut down again. So as I'm putting the retainer brackets back in here, I'm realizing like this thing has almost no RAM. So I think you can put three of these boards in. And they accept one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seventy-two pin SIMs. I think it's just standard PC RAM. Uh, there's three 32 meg sticks in there. So right now it only has like 96 megabytes of image storage. It can hold a lot more than that. So someone wanted this, I'm assuming just for the dual imagers maybe. Or maybe they just needed that tiny bit of extra memory. But that's it. They obviously did not buy it just to max this thing out. Also, while I'm putting this together, just check out. There is a Varta cell that lives in there. It's actually glued to the top board as well. I don't see it leaking, and obviously it was kind of working, so I'll keep that in mind for the future. All right, we're all back together here. Um, I've now checked that, yeah, the 12 volt is clear. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the LED, and I'm gonna turn it on here. I really should be using the foot pedal for this. Let's see if it explodes. Three, two, one. Okay. Nothing exploding.
I don't smell burning tantalum either. Do a smoke test. No? I think we got it. Let me go plug in the remote. Alright, so check out this interesting turn of events. We no longer have corruption when I have the imager plugged in. And you can see the viewfinder is working now. Check it out. So the imager is actually working, but the image is like very faded and it's inverted. Those are my ceiling lights. These things right here. So this is about the exact same issue Tesla 500 ran into where it seems these imaging heads fit, but they're weirdly incompatible. So that's happy. And when I look at the keypad, oh look, there's no longer saying initializing. Instead it says incompatible software version. Huh, okay, is that the imager it's not happy with or the keypad? And yes, as a sanity check, I just kind of plugged in the other imager here. Same cable, same display, keypad now works. And if I put this up here, you can see that that all works. So this here is at least all working with that. Okay, well at the very least, we fix this. And I can kind of see an image out of that. So I have something, something's weird here, but I can't tell what it is until I can sort a few things out. I'm gonna have to talk to a few people and see if I can interchange some parts for testing. But hey, okay, it was as simple as uh, one tantalum capacitor. Easy.